On December 23rd, 2021, YouTuber Trevor Jacob uploaded this video called, I Crashed My Airplane. The video starts with Trevor holding his best friend's ashes in a Ziploc baggie. His plan was to fly this plane from Lompoc City Airport in Southern California to Mammoth Lakes, California to snowboard, paraglide, and spread his friend's ashes in honor of his adventure-filled lifestyle. However, this plane did not make it to Mammoth Lakes. It crashed into the Sierra Nevada mountains after Trevor ejected himself from the side door. Luckily, Trevor survived, and secured the footage to be able to tell us this incredible story. What he didn't realize is that this video was the main source of evidence that the federal government used to put him in prison. Most people are smart enough to know that they shouldn't film themselves committing a crime, but this wasn't even the first time Trevor's videos landed him in jail. Trevor's very first photo on Instagram is a picture of him train hopping in East Ohio. This photo was taken in 2012, while Trevor was filming his journey to skateboard across America, starting in New York City and trying to make it all the way back to Los Angeles. The only way he would be able to get to a new city is by hitchhiking or freight hopping. Like many other train hoppers, Trevor would hide out at the train yard and wait for the staff's shifts to end. Then he would secretly board a train and ride the rails until they stopped or reached their next destination. They wanted to stop at Woodward, Pennsylvania, a world-class weekend retreat for skateboarding, BMX, scootering, gymnastics, and all other action sports. It was during this trip that Trevor Jacob accidentally made skateboarding history. He landed the world's first double back flip on a skateboard. However, skateboarding legend Danny Way says that this trick is technically not a flip. Way said that it's truly an off-axis frontside 720, adding there's a big difference in the approach and rotation between flipping and spinning off-axis. But Trevor was not able to defend his trick because he was sitting in jail. After Trevor left Woodward, he jumped back on a freight train and headed west. While passing through Alliance, Ohio, the train stopped and some workers discovered him and his buddy Taylor Woods hiding under a tarp on a Norfolk Southern train. They were arrested for railroad vandalism and criminal trespassing. After spending two nights in the Stark County Jail, they got out and jumped right back on another train, and another, and another, until he finally made it back home. This particular trip was not the first, nor the last time Trevor train hopped. I can't tell you not to freight train hop, but if you do, don't film it and don't put it online. It's way more hassle than it's worth, um, but uh, they've actually forced me to, to delete. 99% of the videos that I've had on there, court ordered. He doesn't do this because he is homeless with no money. Train hopping is more of a way of life, a rebellious act of defiance and pursuit of freedom, performed by punks who are typically not looking for work nor interested in being a part of society. However, it was this exact lifestyle that earned Trevor a career working for Travis Pastrana's Nitro Circus. Nitro Circus is an action sport collective that travels the country doing live events performing stunts for large stadiums of fans. This was created by Travis Pastrana, professional motorsports competitor and stunt performer. Travis invited Trevor to be a part of the Nitro Circus team from 2013 to 2014. Trevor spent a lot of time with the collective. He also helped Travis film his movie, Action Figures. This was an energy-packed, high-octane film filmed with the craziest stunts performed by the most badass dudes on the planet. Trevor Daniel fit the bill as someone who can pretty much do anything. Skateboard, BMX, snowboard, skydive, dirt bike, you name it, Trevor can do it. He wasn't too interested in traditional sports like basketball or football, but I am. And with the NFL season about to start, Underdog Fantasy is the easiest way to play fantasy sports. Underdog now has week one NFL projections live. It's easy to get in on the action with their pick'em game. All you have to do is pick whether your players will have a higher or lower stat for week one of the NFL season to win big. Pick between two and five players to build a pick'em entry, get all your picks right, and you can win up to 20 times your money. Underdog is available in 40 states and Canada, including California, Texas, and Florida. So for week one of the NFL season, I got Aaron Jones going higher than 46 and a half rushing yards. I am a Giants fan, so for Daniel Jones, I got him going higher than 209 and a half passing yards. And for Aaron Rodgers, I got him going lower than 253 and a half passing yards. I'll throw $200 at it for a max possible payout of $1,200. Sign up on underdogfantasy.com or via the App Store with my code PATRICKCC. You can also use the link in the description or scan the QR code. And Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code PATRICKCC. They're also giving you a special free pick for week one of the NFL season. All Justin Herbert needs to do is have one yard to win. This is the easiest way to make money on Underdog, so make sure you sign up by September 9th using my code PATRICKCC today to take advantage and win some money. Seeing some commercial success through 
through action sports inspired Trevor to get back into his first passion, snowboarding, as he was about to qualify for the 2014 Olympics in Sochi, Russia. Trevor grew up on a ski resort in Mammoth Lakes, California. His father owned a baseless binding company that would supply local shops. Trevor spent his entire youth shredding the mountains and busting out insane tricks. At age 7, he won three gold medals in the USASA Nationals. At 13, he became the youngest halfpipe finalist ever at the US Open of snowboarding. By age 16, he secured a cover of Snowboarder magazine in August and September of 2010, landing himself a Nike 6.0 and Oakley sponsorship. He was a snowboarding prodigy. From 2010 to 2012, he placed top 5 in various Dew Tour and Grand Prix snowboarding events. Events, including a first place in halfpipe at the Burton AM series. But Trevor could not fully commit to one sport. Snowboarding wasn't even his passion. He just grew up on a mountain and didn't have much else to do, and knew that he was really good at it. Not to mention the countless injuries. He claims to have had suffered at least 25 concussions from taking massive slams on his board. In 2012, he simply quit and embarked on his train hopping slash skateboarding across America journey. After this trip, he ran into his former snowboarding coach, Mike Jankowski, who had connections so Trevor could train with the Men's USA snowboard team. But Trevor wanted to try a new event, Border Cross, which is a downhill racing event with twists, turns, and jumps to test a snowboarder's board control. At that camp, Jacob was wild, rough around the edges, and didn't fit in with everyone on the team. Many of the riders felt like he didn't deserve to be there. However, on his first official event, Grand Prix from the Canyons Resort in Utah, he secured a first place victory. From there, he struggled in future events, but came through when it mattered the most. He won his first World Cup race in Valner d'Andorra, and was the second US man named to represent the Olympic team. And I couldn't really believe it, I just kind of dropped in and um... And we wanted to see what would happen, I got down first, and here we are, I'm so excited. Trevor Jacobs went from child prodigy, to train hopping, to nitro circus, and now the Olympics. He proudly represented his country in Sochi, Russia. Unfortunately, he needed a top 8 placement to make it to the SBX finals, and he got ninth, missing his chance to race for a medal by inches. To make matters worse, the next year, his best friend and adventurer Johnny Strange sadly passed away during a base jumping accident. Johnny lived a very similar action-packed nomadic lifestyle. He became the youngest person to climb the Seven Summits, which are the highest mountains in each of the seven continents. Johnny studied what was called the Base Jump Death List and he would meticulously analyze everything that went wrong with other base jumpers. Sadly, he would find himself on that list on September 28th, 2015. Johnny base jumped off the Alpine peak of Mount Gishen in Switzerland. To put it simply, he was just unlucky that day. A combination of an unlucky jump and an unpredictable gust of wind had him plummet downwards too fast, sending him straight into the mountain, dying on impact. Johnny's passing destroyed Trevor. He struggled with depression for many years, but it didn't make him afraid of action sports. It actually made Trevor want to live a more risky and more ambitious lifestyle in honor of his friend. He quit all professional sports by 2016 and lacked consistency in his life from there. You wouldn't be able to tell now because he deleted most of his YouTube catalog, but he was uploading very consistently at one point. His freight train hopping videos were among some of the most popular. For many years, he just maintained his relationship with the Nitro Circus crew. He participated in Travis's second movie, Action Figures 2, and would work on and off whenever he needed money. He was always down to do wild and crazy stunts, but he lived his life chasing his next adrenaline high. This is common for hardcore action sports athletes, or rock climbers, daredevils, or some general outdoorsy people. They spend just enough time within society to make enough money for food, minor expenses, and travel, and spend as much time as they possibly can outdoors doing what they love. This clip pretty much summarizes Trevor's mentality towards life. We're human beings. We have the opportunity to lift up and we can go north, we can go west, we can go east, we can go south, we can go any direction when we want. If you want to change your life, you're not happy with your life right now, you can and you have the opportunity and the power to change it right now. Typically those who lead these nomadic lifestyles struggle to maintain relationships or structure. At any point they will just up and leave or make a drastic change to make themselves feel better. Sometimes when thinking that selfishly you forget how that affects the people around you. And one day Trevor would make a selfish decision so dangerous that it landed him in prison for multiple years. The video titled I Crash My Plane was uploaded on December 23rd, 2021, but the actual crash took place one month prior. On November 24th, 2021, Trevor Daniel Jacob arrived at the Lompoc Airport with his best friend Johnny Strange's ashes in a Ziploc baggie. 
he wants to take his friend's ashes to his favorite mountain and spread them in his honor. He also mentions that the YouTube video he is filming is sponsored by Ridge Wallet. Around 9.30 a.m., Trevor Jacob takes off in his single-engine Taylorcraft BL-65, an aircraft in poor condition that he purchased for very cheap from its previous owner. He reportedly attempted to work on the aircraft himself, despite not being a licensed aircraft engineer or mechanic, which is illegal. Trevor also has a parachute specifically designed for skydiving strapped to his back. Pilots do not usually carry parachutes, let alone these ones. In the cockpit, a fuel line can be seen attached to the fuel selector, not plugged into the wing, a result of his shoddy work on the aircraft. At around 10 a.m., he is flying at an altitude of 10,000 feet when he says that his engine fails. Holy f I'm over the mountains and I get out an engine out. But before he even says that his engine fails, his door is open, and he had already been looking down for a minute or so instead of trying to assess the problem inside of the cockpit. He begins pulling the yoke to slow down the plane and stop the propellers from spinning. Every aviation expert has said that this is the exact opposite of what you would want to do in this situation, and takes a considerable amount of effort to actually stop them from spinning. Normally, the protocol for a pilot to follow during an engine failure is to angle the plane for optimal speed to glide through the air for as long as possible, and during that glide time, search for a place to land safely. Trevor does neither of these and instead stops the propellers. Why? The only explanation would be for dramatic effect. There are also several visible safe places to land his aircraft, which is designed for off-field landings. But it seems as if he never tried to handle the problem in the cockpit. Instead, he immediately decided to grab his GoPro, jump out of the plane, and parachute to safety. Falling in the sky, he has a choice to make. Does he float to safety in civilization near the valley, or does he land in the dense brush on the mountainside to retrieve his GoPros? Instead of maximizing his chances of survival, he decided to land in the bushes to retrieve the footage. After about a 20 minute walk in the mountains, Trevor found the aircraft. But the more you analyze the footage, the more unlikely this story seems. After he deploys his parachute, the video cuts between three different shots. A shot of Trevor holding the GoPro he jumped with, two shots of the plane doing a death spiral from the GoPros that were attached to it, and a shot of the plane from above. But this above shot is incredibly confusing. You could see how much further below he is from the plane. So how did the plane all of a sudden get that far below him? Trevor claims that while he was parachuting, he pulled out his GoPro and filmed the plane as it fell to the earth. Jeff Harris explained that the only possible way Trevor could have gotten this angle is if he jumped out of the plane and moved 4,500 feet horizontally while only losing 800 feet in elevation, which is impossible. Not to mention that these above shots are perfectly stabilized and smooth with the plane in the center, and they rotate on a perfect axis, never dipping in elevation. Under no circumstance would that plane hit the ground before for him. He fell for 3,500 feet in what people estimate to be 20 seconds before deploying his parachute. That specific plane is known to glide really well, so the shot of the plane from above would have been impossible unless it was shot by a drone or chase vehicle operated by someone else. Jeff Harris's theory is that Trevor jumped out of the plane, landed safely in the valley, got picked up by his friends, and used that drone footage to locate the plane, then the next day did another flight and another jump near the crash site to recover the footage and act out an entertaining YouTube video. But the evidence doesn't stop there. As soon as he lands, he struggles for a bit, trying to get himself out of the brush. We get a black screen that says 20 minutes later, and he is now filming with his phone. Then it cuts to GoPro footage without his bag on his back, then back to his phone, then back to his GoPro. Although it's unlikely to have cell service out there, why would you waste phone battery filming when there's a mere chance you could use it to call someone? He says he always freaking fly with a parachute. Although he has multiple videos of him flying without a parachute. You can also see that he is carrying a gun. Pilots carrying guns is not typical unless you are extremely paranoid. But when you are entering the mountains with dangerous animals, it makes sense to carry. So it's almost like he knew he would end up in those mountains. The rest of the video is him just trekking through the mountains miles and miles away from civilization. But only seven hours went by and somehow farmers located him. These farmers just happened to be driving through the mountains, off-road, and they were wearing all black and skateboard shoes. The video ends with Trevor completing his mission of spreading his friend's ashes on the top of his favorite mountain to paraglide. After Trevor posted this video, immediately every pilot and aviation expert on YouTube assessed it and gave their thoughts. All of them agreed that based on this footage, Trevor did nothing to try and save that aircraft and most likely had full intention of jumping out of that plane while letting it crash on purpose. And it turns out, they were right. 
On November 26, 2021, Jacob informed the National Transport Safety Board about the plane crash, two days after it happened. The NTSB immediately launched an investigation. The Federal Aviation Association also began an investigation. He was told he was responsible for preserving the wreckage so that they could analyze it. These investigations are extremely important so the professionals can learn what happened so that it doesn't happen to anyone else. However, in early December, Trevor lied to investigators and said that he did not know the wreckage's location. He was dumb enough to post a YouTube video proving he did in fact know where the wreckage's location was. On April 1st, 2022, less than four months after the video was released, they sent an emergency order to revoke his pilot's license. The FAA determined that Trevor operated this flight to purposely crash, using his YouTube video as the main source of evidence, specifically violating a federal aviation regulation that states no person may operate an aircraft in a careless or reckless manner so as to endanger the life or property of another. Once this news broke, the story was being told on a national level. To the YouTube daredevil who has now had his pilot's license revoked, the FAA saying he intentionally crashed that plane in his viral video. Will Reeve has more. In response, Trevor posted a video called I Lost My Pilot's License, in which he reacted to the news in a very strange way. I'm sorry if I offended you, but at the end of the day, you're the one that chose to be offended. <laughs> <laughs> After watching this video, it really proves Trevor is pathetic. He decides to go down the they were trying to sabotage me route when it's so obvious that he staged the video. Even though his license was revoked, justice was not served. This investigation was not over. As you can imagine, the USA has extremely strict laws regarding air travel after 9-11. Purposely crashing a plane is a felony, and the federal government started their case against him. In the meantime, Trevor continued to live an adventure-filled life. Base jumping, skydiving, a lot of his videos are now deleted, but he continued to upload ones despite the comment sections absolutely destroying him. In July of 2022, he posted a video titled, I'm sorry. In this 45 minute rant, Trevor does not apologize. He says that he didn't intend on hurting anyone or making anyone angry. I didn't think that everyone would perceive it the way that it was perceived. I didn't really know how it was gonna get perceived, but I definitely didn't think it was gonna make people angry. He rambles on on how he isn't a bad person, but the internet made it seem like he is one. Then Vice put out a 20 minute documentary that celebrated Trevor's life. He addressed the allegations there. Whether I completely did that on purpose or whether it was the scariest, most terrifying accident that was completely non-intentional, the world may never know. The smile on his face tells it all, but we don't need to guess because nine months later, his legal counsel advised him to take a plea agreement and Trevor finally admitted to his wrongdoings. On May 11th, 2023, Trevor Jacob agreed to plead guilty to a felony charge for obstructing a federal investigation by deliberately destroying the wreckage of an airplane that he intentionally crashed. According to the plea agreement, on December 10th, 2021, Two weeks after the plane crash, Jacob and a friend flew by the helicopter to the wreckage site. There, Jacob used straps to secure the wreckage, which the helicopter lifted and carried to Rancho Sisqua in Santa Barbara County, where it was loaded onto a trailer attached to Jacob's pickup truck. Jacob then drove the wreckage to Lompoc City Airport and unloaded it in a hangar. He then cut up and destroyed the airplane wreckage and over the course of a few days deposited the detached plane parts of the wrecked airplane into trash bins at the airport and elsewhere, which he admitted in his plea agreement was done with the intent to obstruct federal authorities from investigating the November 24th plane crash. The press releases have all said that he is facing a maximum of 20 years in prison, but we know plea deals are strategic. If they did a full-on trial and he was found guilty, he might face that maximum, but he is essentially cutting his losses. The minimum sentence is just a few months of probation. Trevor does have a prior criminal record, but ultimately his fate is in the judge's hands. His sentencing will happen within a few weeks from now. If the judge sentences him to more than 24 months, he can appeal. And when we find out, I'll update in the comments what his sentence was. It's unlikely this was all a stunt for a Ridge Wallet sponsorship. Trevor has not been one to ever care about money. His whole life has revolved around documenting his crazy adventurous lifestyle. He genuinely believed that nobody could get hurt and that abandoning his plane would be the most badass stunt he's ever done. Even though Trevor pleaded guilty, it's pretty obvious he doesn't think he did anything wrong but he has a lot of time to think about it because his next big adventure is going to be sitting in a prison cell for many years.